Okay, so first thing, I have this footstep folder, which I put the sounds in. They each have a heavy and a light footstep. And I discovered something. You can just right-click on these, create single cue, and it just makes it for you, so that's nice. So I'm just going to do that with dirt and concrete. So I got a heavy, and we got a light. Now we need a database to associate physical materials with these sounds. So I'm going to create a structures folder, and then I'm going to go ahead and create an enumeration. I'll call it Fizmat Effect Types. So for now, I'm just going to be using heavy and light. And then we need a structure. Fizmat. SFX. I'll just call it map. So we're going to use the FizMat types. And then make it a map and associate that with a sound cue. And that's it. One more structure and we'll call it FizMat profile. And this will just be, for now, one item, footstep sound effects. And that will be the Fizmat SFX. And finally, a data table using the Fizmat profile. Okay, let's add two rows here. So these, each of these rows represents the physical material of the geometry you're walking on. So name it after the physical materials. For now, it's just concrete and dirt. So in concrete, add a heavy with uh, the concrete heavy cue. Oh, see, it won't let us add another one. So in Fizmat effect types, let's just add a none and move it to the top, so it'll default to none. All right, so heavy, light. There's the light cue, and for dirt, do the same thing. Heavy, light, and dirt, heavy, and dirt light. Okay, so that should be good. Now we just have to set up the character to use it. Okay, so in your project folder, it's ideal if you create a parent character class from which other characters can inherit these things. And I'm just calling it character base. And then we want to move all the core functions of the footstep into character base. So first of all, in the player character, under class settings here, change parent class to character base. The one you just made. And we can leave this stuff, the timeline, because it's reasonable to assume that this is the only character ever that will use a timeline for footsteps. Like, no NPCs will, will do this. Let's move footstep trace to parent class. Yes. Uh, go back. And then do the same thing with try footstep. Compile character base first, and then the other one. And it should still work. Okay, so now we're working with character base.
So first in our footstep trace, drag out the hit pin and return it. We're going to need that later. And then in try footstep, we need to add an input for type, which is going to be our fizzmat type, effect type. And I'm going to change the default from none to heavy. Now we're already set up for the footstep trace hit result. So drag that out, type break, break hit result. There's fizzmat. So get object name. And then up here we want to get data table. Get data table row. And add a variable in here. Call it physical material profile. And we'll use the data table. Data table asset. That should be it. Set the default there. And plug that into the physical material profile variable. And row, row name should plug in to the row name here, or the physical material. Okay, so it looks like it can't figure out what the row is going to be. So we're going to have to help it out. Drag that out. Break fizzmat profile. And then break again. And do use break nodes. Like don't do split. Because if you want to modify these structures, it tends to break less with these actual dedicated nodes to breaking the structures. Okay, so if the rows found, we play the sound. Except now, we go find, and here we go. Now we're getting it. So we're going to use type, and we're going to pull from type. Oops. You can just type it in here. Go down here. This is it. In variables. Get type. So now it will get the correct sound based on whether it's a light or heavy footstep, as in walking or running, as well as the physical material, as in dirt or concrete. And you can just plug it in there. And now we're going to have different sounds based on the physical materials. And then you can decide whatever you want. If the row is not found, you could make it play a default sound, or you could just do nothing. Personally, I would just drag another get table row. And use the same data table. And just decide the name. Concrete. Oh, you can just copy this. And then if the sound isn't found, it'll just play concrete sounds. Okay, so to set up the physical materials, let's see. It depends where you want to put it. This is just a demo project, so I'm just, I'm just going to put it in footsteps. And I'm going to put it in Fizzmat. Okay, there it is under physics, physical material. And remember, this has to be named the same thing as the data table rows. Concrete and dirt. Okay, so I'll show you the two different ways to make use of these. The easiest is to just go into the object in the world and under here, physical material override, you just pick concrete. And in this one, I'll do dirt. Let's see how that goes.
obviously it works. Now this is a good way to do it if for some reason you want the same material to have different physical materials. So let's say this is actually a dirt material. Just open the material. And there it is right there, fizz material. So you can set that to dirt in here and then you won't have to keep changing it in the level. So for sake of demonstration, I'm going to remove this from the override. There it's none again. And it still works. So now let's say you want to add a new one. All you have to do is duplicate this. I'll call it glass. Let's assign this cylinder to glass. Then all you have to do is make a new data table row. Let's just duplicate that. Call it glass, the same thing. Okay, so those are in. That's set up. There you go. But I just realized we didn't even cover the like light and heavy. So how do we do that? So we have most of it. All we have to do is, is when we call try footstep is to set it to light or heavy. So I would put this, I would put this in the bit character base is walking. Now, there's a multitude of ways to change this when you call try footstep. But as it stands right now, there's only two options, so we're using a boolean. And let's create a walk function. So we'll call it walk, of course. And then this will be a input based okay so right away let's set is walking and then branch off that grab our character movement and set max walk speed And then just copy that down below. Okay, so is walking true? So this is the walk speed. Drag out the pin here, promote to variable. And then down here do the same thing, promote to another variable. And name them accordingly. So what is it? This is walk speed. And the other one is run speed. So here's our timeline from the first video. All you gotta do is get a select node. Pull out is walking as it inherits from character base. True is light. False is heavy. Since we're using an example of a first person character scenario, this uh, walk function won't cover the timeline. So we'll just add uh, override a function here in the first person character and we can click walk there. So only thing we have to do in here is reference the timeline footstep timeline and set play rate and we can automate this so drag out character movement and get max walk speed and divide that by 
run speed. Because all timelines start with a play rate of 1, which we have based off running. Therefore, the variable run speed represents that 1, that rate of 1. So whatever the new max walk speed is, that will dictate how fast the uh, timeline plays. And then in your player character, just add a, an event to walk. You should use a, an action event in project settings, but I'm just going to use shift for now. And then all you have to do is call walk. You can literally just input true and on released, input false. Whoops, I, did, I didn't set the default values. So walk speed should be 300. Run speed should be 500, I believe, for this one. 